Hour presents Self-Medication. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And this is Nick Daniel. Yeah. Nick, thank you for joining us on this one. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, how might people know your work, Nick? Um, I make the comic Latchkey Kingdom. It's at latchkeykingdom.com. It's uh, about kid adventures, although it's more of a fantasy bent than this. Yeah. 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 You, you may also know Nick, illustrated my two, my two books. Mm-hmm. Excellent illustrator as well. Guest on episodes of uh, Bonfire Side Chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Friend of the show. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I uh, did not, I, I feel embarrassed because at one point on the, the show, I was like, I don't know enough friends who like Venture Brothers. And then Nick was like, what am I, not your friend? I, I just don't really like Venture Brothers. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't know if I qualify as friend of the show. <laughs> I don't know what, like, you know, that's, it's nebulous. It's like, you know, I've never picked up the show from the airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it, we'll, we'll talk. Help the, the show The show is landing in Newark in five minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I never know who's going to be into the Venture Brothers. I don't know how cool it is to like the Venture Brothers now. Mm-hmm. I got I got no idea who likes the Venture Brothers. <laughs> uh, what uh, what cho- what drove you to choose this this episode, other than its general goodness? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's got uh, a lot of fun characters in it. Um, you know, the whole uh, therapy group. Um, you know, in rewatching this, I really like Action Johnny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a, he's a fun time. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I guess, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, like, Doc really does his thing. But no, he doesn't. He's actually kind of weirdly background in this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a Doc episode, but it's like Doc context. Yes. You know? Yeah. He's around. Is, uh, is Action Johnny the best junkie? In fiction, because he's a pretty good junkie. And, but Bubbles from The Wire, Bubbles is a great junkie. Yeah, don't get me wrong. But, but Bubbles also got clean. It, okay. <laughs> you know, whereas Johnny, nobody keeps Johnny down. Uh, J- J- Johnny is intermittently clean, depending yeah. on how in the uh, carceral system he is. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're never you're, you're never, always an addict. Yeah, you're never clean, clean. I'll tell you, yeah, it's uh, just who you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree that he is a big, big highlight mm-hmm. in this episode. Uh, a lot of the best lines. And, and he's a very good performance. And he's been a he's been a scene stealer before, but he's never had as much focus as he has here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I love this episode. This is one of my favorites of, of my favorite season mm-hmm. of the show. I think this is very good. And I even really love the B plot, which mm-hmm. is controversial as the Sergeant hatred liker yeah. on the internet <laughs> with, with, you know, um, I think that it, there are a lot of very good jokes in that. Not necessarily just, you know, Hey, Hey molesting, but yeah. the other jokes around it, I think are pretty funny. There sure are a lot of realms in this. <laughs> it's very good. This it's is like where, a great line. This is where we get the Henry Darger reference. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. You know, I've um, heard of that guy. I, I actually saw the documentary he's known for, uh, but I did not know the recognize the name until I looked it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no. I'm just like, I it's, can't it's, believe it's seriously this guy. That's the cut. <laughs> it, it's a pretty deep cut. Yeah. The, um, yeah. It's, all, it's also like a, uh, like a, like a really specific, like a, a outsider art cut, but also a, like a Chicago area Midwest cut as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so this episode, uh, written by Jackson public aired on November 23rd, 2009. And as we mentioned, the, uh, a plot is rusty attending group therapy with former boy adventurers. Yeah. Um, and we got a cast for we, this one. We do. We got Seth green. We got John Hodgman, Patton Oswalt, Brendan small comes back. Brandon small from, mm-hmm. from, from big shows as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, they're all playing this, you know, not rogues gallery. Uh, but uh just these these the, these boy adventurers who are all pretty closely mapped onto other uh onto existing either characters or people uh mm-hmm. and uh they, like they, they they they're ruined by their childhoods they're they they they're they're they they stunted folks uh and they are uh pulled back into another mystery and it's fun it's fun to see them fall back into their old habits and absolutely fail completely yes like th- this has a big catharsis at the end. Yes. I think. 
<laughs> uh, very sweet. Yeah. Well, because um, it's it's also the return of Dr. Z, who just who primarily comes back because Jackson Public likes voicing Dr. Z. Who wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's so, and I, I love this Dr. Z. I love domestic Dr. Z. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, so this is, uh, and I like this, this John Hodgman much better than his recurring role, which yes. I think is a big waste of space mm. when he shows up as a recurring role later on the show. Yeah. Um, do not you know, care for that character. Kind of reminiscent of his, like, uh, he had a cartoon series last year, Dick Town. Okay. Where okay. he played an adult, uh, so, well, kind of like a man child, uh, it, detective where he's an adult, but he's mostly solving crimes for teenagers. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> can, can I, I, I've told the story on shows before, but because it really relates, can I tell a quick anecdote? You may. No. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> for the boss. <laughs> yes. Um, when I was a kid, when I was an early teen, uh, somebody took a gigantic carnival Snoopy and, uh, you know, actually, yeah, relates as well. John Hutchman, mm-hmm. um, like a big Snoopy toy. And tore it up and spread all the, like the the stuffing, all the styrofoam pebbles okay. all over my yard. Uh, and I got in trouble for somebody doing that, and I had to clean it up. So I was trying to figure out which kids did it. And because I was an idiot little dipshit kid, I was like, oh, this is a cool mystery. Like, I'm going to interview people <laughs> and figure out who's culpable. <laughs> and then do what? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but I went up to these, like, bigger kids, and I... Uh, was asking them about it and had a little notepad. Like just oh, I need to imagine this chubby little acting <laughs> twerp. Did you have, uh, did you have a did you have a fucking like deer stalker cap, dude? I, I if I owned one I would have it. Okay. Okay. I, on the top of this notepad I had written the great Snoopy mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I asked them these guys where they were at the time of the, the de-stuffing. Uh, and they, you know, laughed at me or whatever, did what they should have done. Yeah. yeah. Flash forward several months later, I'm at a show in a park shelter. Uh, in my hometown, uh, I'm over there hanging out with my friends over by, uh, like, the swing set. Those big kids are, like, across the way on the other side of the thing. And one of them just yells, the great Snoopy mystery <laughs> at, the, at the top of his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same house and age when I ran out in the street and yelled Mortal Combat on World Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> or Mortal Monday. Oh, so, sounds like you were this. a very brave child. <laughs> I, you know, I, for some reason, I because I, I, I was basically the same size and shape as I am now from when I was like 13. So I wasn't that scared physically, but I should have been way more scared emotionally. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you know. uh, and I, I love the memory on these. I was about to call them bullies. They were absolutely right to do what they did. Yeah, no, no, they were good citizens. Yeah. They were just trying to correct my behavior. And like, yeah. honestly, I owe them a card or like an edible arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hey, you, you do you remember the great soupy mystery? Here are some cookies on dolls. We, if I give them cookie dolls, the other thing I could do is give them a bloody Snoopy head and be like, do you remember the great Snoopy mystery? <laughs> <laughs> really go crazy. Give them the great Snoopy mystery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the mystery is how the, the, the stuffing of the Snoopy is actually someone, you know, <laughs> Like, just really, really go dark with it. Oh, God. Uh, uh. So, uh, the, for, for most of these folks who they got on, the, it's it's fun to hear them talk on the on the commentary uh, because mm-hmm. they uh, because the, the, they were kind of ge- geeking out that they got to work with Pat Oswalt and stuff. For, 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 for most of the folks, they had to get them on the phone because they were based out in L.A. They had to record with them over the course of an hour. Um, mm-hmm. uh, John Hodgman lives in New York, so they could get him in the studio there. Uh, also it's fun on the commentary because they're, they're talking about how Brendan small and James Urbaniak make fun of their writing when they, mm-hmm. uh, when, when they're in the booth, <laughs> just kind of picking it apart. And then they like lean into and sarcastically, the say, sarcastically say the parts that are expository. Uh, and one of the best lines in this, uh, uh the, what Johnny says in the bar about the herpy, uh, is, uh, is, mm-hmm. is, 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 is improv because of that. <laughs> it's a real good improv. Yeah. Uh, we alluded briefly to the B plot, which is, uh, Sergeant hatred, taking the boys out to a movie and running out of his medicine, no molestol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then having this crisis, locking himself away for everyone's safety. Wait, no. uh, what does no molestol do? <laughs> he seems really stressed out about the, something the name, <laughs> the name that's like abilify or like mm-hmm. no depressatol or whatever <laughs> like the, the current uh, antidepressants you know, that funny name yeah um yeah 
uh, that part of this is is divisive, and the the boys in commentary in the book are pretty defensive of it. Like, hey, we had to do jokes. We we did this thing. Yeah, yeah. you know, we made this character a pedophile. And we had to do jokes. And again, I'm gonna always be the person who sees the fact that Sergeant Hatred doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. he's trying not to. Mm-hmm. He he too is a victim. Um, we mentioned in perchance the dean this was going to be a B plot of that, which is wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they took it out of that, they originally had it be its own plot with a whole third act. Uh, that they end up cutting. Yeah. Um, it was very complicated. It was going to be these uh, old boy adventurers versus a modern group of boy detectives who were called the Twinkertons, um, who were, uh, or I thought it was Tinkertons. It's so, so uh, it's in the, in the commentary, they say Tinkertons. In the art book, they say Twinkertons. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so like little kids uh, riding Vespas, talking like Joe Friday, who are way better, you know, kid detectives than the old people. <laughs> um, and they, they cut that for time. Uh, but then they still didn't know who did the uh, the murder, and then Ken Plume was like, "Oh, it's the monarch." Yeah, yeah. And it's like, "Oh shit, of course." It, it's just the it's the easiest thing. Just merge your A plots and B plots, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah easy peasy. Yeah, or merge your ending and your beginning as well. Oh well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah just Se- Seinfeld this, but Go yeah, <laughs> Seinfeld it up a notch. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's get into it. Let's do. I love this cold open. I I, mm-hmm. I, I love when the monarch has little fits of competency. You know, he the has scary in it. <laughs> yeah, the scary in it is very good. The the purple searchlight, the the, the speech, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. how how much you how, how much you w- wish you could have avoided this, you know, and not understanding that there was never a way. Every turn was a path right to this point where you where mm-hmm. I got you. It's very good. Yeah. But it's weird because it's not like he was lured into a trap. It's like you just came to his house. <laughs> <You know? laughs> He's yeah, there every day. <laughs> Most turns of fate do bring me to my bedroom. Yes. Yes. Uh, so if somebody were arching me, mm-hmm. they could they could make that argument that that's why I was there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I also like Doc's gold toe socks, uh, not only because mm-hmm. the boys seem very, they're way into that design choice. I'm wearing some black gold toes right now, baby. They're good socks. You're saying you're a gold toe boy, aren't I'm you? I'm a gold toe boy. I've been a gold toe uh, boy for years. I yeah. thought you were just a straight up black toe, black show, sock boy. No, no, no. Huh. Yeah, yeah, gold toes, What baby. kind of socks you rocking, Nick? <laughs> I am rocking no socks. Oh, okay. Whoa! I'm in my house. Why would I wear shoes? <laughs> well, I do it because the cats track litter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I do it because it's cold here now. Mm. Uh, and socks and slippers, wearing, baby. Yeah, yeah. No. wearing uh, Yoshi socks. Mm. Anywho, uh, the cocoon webs him up. You know, he's not going off that easily. Jumping off the roof, uh, turns him into a marionette. Uh, and his watch beeps because uh, it's time for therapy. And because of new guild rules, they count mental health as health as they should. Mm-hmm. So the monarch has to let him go. Yep. He needs um, a doctor's note, so they have to. <laughs> I just, I love just how clearly practiced the monarch is at working the marionette. Uh, we're mm-hmm, just like, yeah. okay, the rusty can't move on his own volition, so we have to have him pull you to, to, to pull the strings to pull the note out of his front pocket. Very good. Yeah, very good. Yes. Uh, you know, monarch is saying like, oh, I, I finally drove you insane. When the henchman chimes in with the very correct thing that people go to therapy for any number of reasons, mm-hmm. uh, but the monarch kills him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for this. And calls off his troops. So rain, another rain delay in the, uh, the arching. <laughs> yeah. And t- t- 21 had hatred on the ropes had him mm-hmm. on the, uh, at the, at the end of his wrist blade. Uh, and we cut over, uh, we have just a terrible, this, this is, I mean, there are a number of very bad things that Jonas did, but like, this is just straight up abusive. <laughs> Jonas is fucking horrible. I hate this so much. Rusty's lying yeah. on the couch in the in the pool room, <laughs> you know, talking about all of his kid adventure problems. I never get to leave the compound except to go to like weird places like the Bermuda Triangle. Or I get like, kidnapped by adults. Yeah, I don't I have can't any... hang out with kids my own age. You know, no, I don't have any friends. What I don't get is he's complaining about not being with kids his age, but we see in the background in like the pool, there's his. Uh, I don't remember the guy's Hector. name, but his, you know, <laughs> yep, his friend he bought or whatever from <laughs> that foreign country. Yeah. yeah. It's a, uh, you know, maybe he doesn't get to hang out with him because his dad's a raging racist. Possibly. They, he did buy a boy. <laughs> there, there's, there's a kind of a theme of buying brown boys in this episode. <laughs> well, well, put that fr- together, little, but everybody little, gets one. A little fraught. <laughs> yeah. It's a little fraught. Yeah. Um, but he, you know, he say he's saying these very uh, understandable things. His dad, who was not listening to his therapy, <laughs> sneaks in to catch the end, and just says, "So what I'm hearing is that you're entirely ungrateful, and you blame all your problems on your father." <laughs> uh, 
absolute like abuse. <laughs> yeah. <horrible. laughs> terrible yeah. terrible things uh and it, you know cuts to present day and this is this is rusty explaining to his therapist uh voiced by paul bukok the uh the guy who does uh uh bud man strong uh voice actor mm-hmm. there uh recurring from i believe uh helpless in the face of death uh but you know explaining like yeah so you you i think you understand why i'm a little bit averse to therapy right but this mm-hmm. is different, you know, like a, I'm not your dad. B, this is group therapy. This is a, the, this is a group night for former boy adventurers. And we get to go around the room and meet all of this, all of this, uh, just group of very broken people. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go through them. Yeah. Uh, we got, uh, wonder boy one. That's wonder boy uh, two voice. Oh, Wonder Boy 2, yes, because Wonder Boy 1, uh, Wonder Boy 3 got killed, Yes, according to the art book. That's the one that there's the, and then the little plaque is for Wonder Boy 1. Yeah. Um, he, he got aged out. He got menudoed <laughs> out of the Wonder Boy <laughs> lifestyle, uh, voiced by Patton Oswalt. Uh, he has an eating disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really glad that in the uh, the commentary, they point out that he's supposed to have rosacea, rosacea acting up, because mm-hmm. it looks so weird. It and does. See what's going on with his oh. face. I assume with the whole Captain Sunshine thing of some sort of sunburn. Oh. That's what I thought too. Yeah. But yeah, they, they said it's a rosacea. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they make fun of themselves for asking the animators to figure out what rosacea would look like animated. <laughs> like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. But, but he's explaining like, you know, I just, I, I, I led a very active lifestyle as a kid, but then I turned 18, I got kicked out and then it started a shame spiral, uh, you know, of eating. Right. And so he's there in his old uh, in his old costume, uh, which he's allowed. He's only allowed to wear parts of his costume uh, mm-hmm. legally. So like you can see the 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 place where the W used to be, uh, but he can't actually wear the W anymore because of litigation. Like, he can just be boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, love that. There are other words that start with W. Yes, that's yeah. true. Well, I, maybe we don't know what what uh, <laughs> Captain Sunshine's lawyers have their paws on. Yeah. Um, the, uh, and then we got Lance and Dale Hale, uh, fraternal twins, uh, copies of the Hardy Boys, Hale being a synonym for Hardy, mm-hmm. um, but also the Menendez brothers <laughs> for some reason. Uh, th- this is a weird dated thing even when this came out. I remember yeah. when the cable guy was like rife with that Menendez brothers subplot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of the weirdest things in that movie. Yeah. There's like an SNL sketch about the Menendez brothers that happens intermittently throughout the cable guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So weird. Uh, I saw the guy. I, th- I yeah, think he was Asian. He, was Asian. <laughs> he looked <Yeah>. Asian. <laughs> Just, the uh, the uh, Menendez brothers, for people who don't know, which should be, I hope it's most of you because it, it's yeah. old. It, old prim- news. it primarily existed as uh, like uh, it was almost like them trying, like them trying to start up another uh, another trial after uh, uh, OJ. OJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one of the top five trials of the nineties. Yeah. It it definitely was. It's like up there with uh like OJ and Lorena Bobbitt and mm-hmm. um, Nancy Kerrigan. what's her head? Yeah, yeah Nancy Kerrigan, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. it's all like all, all of these uh the that primarily existed as weekend update uh punchlines. Yes. Yeah. Uh and like well, the real Menendez just brothers. TV existed, so <laughs> yeah. they had that right. programming. Yeah. Uh, much like the real men and his brothers, these two kill their dad and are real cagey about it. Yes. Uh, Lance is uh, voiced by Seth Green, mm-hmm. uh, real aggro. Um, this is there's a bunch of real good lines here. I love where it's like, you know, we didn't get we didn't get shit. Dad lost most of it to the you know boy Advent, boy detectives league. We didn't get that car. It's fucking cherry. Love <laughs> <laughs> well, the delivery on that. Um, oh, I, I love then, Lance Hale as a as as a, an evolved form of a dermot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like the Pokemon third Derm- Dermot Mega Evolution. Um, but he's like and a then, country club Dermot. Yep. Yeah, like something in a rich a Dermot. Sweater runs neck. And just... <laughs> yeah. It's a rags to riches Dermot. We got a Dermot to, to Lance pipeline. Um, and then we got John Hodgman doing his mumbly shtick mm-hmm. as Dale. Yes. Who's the more uh, the more passive one who is obviously uh kind of just went along with it he was cowed by his brother and uh yeah just a, a, just yeah. A, just real uh, uh wrapped up in the in, in the guilt over the crime we got action johnny who like skips his introduction because you know, you know rusty I mean, kn- knows him yeah and rusty go way back <laughs> yeah <laughs> then he ends up doing his introduction anyways <laughs> To, to, to interrupt Robo Boy. Robo Boy. <laughs> Ro Boy. Uh, it, like, it's something in a nude Astro Boy. <laughs> like, what's it, like a flesh colored Astro Boy? 
Um, well, Astro Boy's mostly flesh colored too, because he's just he, wearing hot pants. He, he is pretty flesh colored. Astro Boy does look like like a fun mascot. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And Ro Boy is very Astro Boy. Yeah. Well, in the in the art book, there are sketches, and then they, they talk about like the the original idea was that he was going to be kind of uncanny, like have kind of a real doll kind of appearance. Uh, just a just a mm-hmm. real pair of DSLs uh, on that uh, on that thing, I but think they kind of still does little he has bit. Weird eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, oh, Gary, we we should probably uh, on the WAF uh, at some point. It'd be fun to do that uh, Astro Boy Game Boy Advance game. That one's pretty the fun. GBA game. Yeah, the game rules. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have no particular affection for Astro Boy, but mm-hmm. oh, that thing goes on forever. Is the game really long? I, I can't remember it. Uh, I played it when I first got like emulation. This weird th- it has this like loop where you keep replaying it and getting different timelines. Mm. And they Ooh. really pad that out with these long encounters of the same sprite but at different sizes. Because oh. like sprite mm. scan was a huge thing with that game. Yeah. Well, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't. I think you talked yeah. us out of it. I never beat it. I just remembered having a fun time with it. Yeah, that, uh, that's my only... Yeah, it's fun for a while. It's kind of like a tour of Tezuka's work because there's so many cameos in it. Uh-huh. But it does go on yeah mm. no th- th- yeah. that that is the only like real reference that i have uh with astro boy that and when i was describing to my dad like when i started watching anime it was like oh japanese cartoons like astro boy and i was like oh you were watching anime too that's weird mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was just but it was astro boy yeah, yeah. um the uh the end of this is a great little bit where everybody has to turn off their communicators uh and wonder boy just touches the bell and goes beep boop like audibly <laughs> which is very funny uh, very cute lance won't let it go <laughs> uh the b plot hatred has taken the boys out to the movies because like what else are you gonna do during a rain delay mm-hmm. you know uh talking about the uh you know the cost of snacks and everything uh here um and they sit down uh the henchmen sit down in front of them which i love all of you know all of hank's deliveries during every episode are great mm-hmm. uh, he's very good i love him arguing that this counts as arching <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't, like somebody sitting in front of you at a theater yeah <laughs> shut up your wings, wings. arching <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, don't the wings go down or is that just monarchs maybe I, the uh they fly yeah um i can't remember if they go down though i don't think they do on the henchmen um the uh or but they choose not to well, of course if it does would be uncomfortable for them as well yeah um everything hatred does here i love uh i love him uh it, this is when he's like yo there's sure are a lot of realms he's like who's that little guy with the axe <laughs> That's Grimsby. He's yeah. a troll. I like him. He's got moxie. Like <laughs> he's again. He's just so game for everything. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a they're, um, they're here. While it's Rings of the Realm is what they're is what is what they're mm-hmm. watching. It's like a Lord of the Rings kind of thing. This is the third, the third one. one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and uh, hatred. I had not seen the first two. Which twenty one takes uh, great offense to the fact that uh, it's that weird he be here. Yeah. Be real weird just to watch Return of the King. Hmm. If he's taking kids there, yeah, they're, they're yeah. familiar. <laughs> yeah, they're going to explain it to him, yes. and they do. They love it. Yeah. Um, the uh, and he's just, like I'm just kind of explaining all of this stuff that we don't think of in terms of of you know sexual at all because we're not Sergeant Hatred. But just right. like, oh, technically his people don't have a gender. Uh-huh. They're thirteen forever. Like all these things that are just very uh, you know bait for a hatred mm-hmm. hatred bait. Yes. Here. Yeah, you know, uh, just he, he asked like, "Hey, you know, what's up with that?" You know, oh, that's the that's the elf king. Uh, you know, he's he, he he's an elf that stays thirteen forever, and you know, the elves don't have gender. Uh, you know, it's like, what the did Henry Darger write this? Should we explain yeah. who Henry Darger was? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, re- reclusive guy. I think he lived back in the uh, like the thirties and forties. Uh, he worked like a, as a as a janitor in a bunch of different places, but uh, he uh, dedicated his his life uh, like really all that he did was write this ongoing story uh, about about the Vivian girls, these like girls who stayed young forever in this kingdom. Um, and, you know, it was like very long, uh, very long and involved. And he like got um, so wrapped up in the idea that like there was a linkage between reality and what was going on here that he would like, you know, if something bad happened, he would punish himself by having bad things happen in the story itself. And this was all, uh, accompanied by like these really, you know, very, very strange, like collage drawings that he did, uh, with, uh, you know, like these little kids and things like that. Just this massive saga. Uh, and after he died, all of his works got, you know, got sold as like outsider art. 
uh, even they, though... they were discovered posthumously. Yes. Yeah. They were published. Yeah. But uh, yeah. also the the illustrations were generally the the protagonist are like four and five year old girls mm-hmm. who are naked and have penises. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a. It ends up being um, a real Google image search. Yeah. Henry yeah. Darger. Uh, it, so yeah. there, the, as Nick said, there's a documentary. Well, what's that documentary called? The Henry Darger one. Uh, oh, realms yeah. of the unreal. Okay. I believe yeah. there's also, oh, also if, about realms. <laughs> all realms in that thing. You said so many realms. Uh, th- there are also, uh, there, there's also a good, uh, down the rabbit hole video on, uh, on YouTube about it. Mm-hmm. If you want a little, uh, a short, uh, a short kind of more direct explanation. Yeah, and the, the yeah. thing with the penises was it's uncertain whether he knew that boys and girls had different genitalia. There's a, a biography uh, about him called Throwaway Boy hmm. that is just about like how sad that dude's life was. Yeah. That seemed, uh, yeah, seems just interesting to me. Didn't have the support that he uh, needed. Yeah. Unlike uh, hatred. Yeah. His medications and stuff. Um, we do this little uh, cut between the different uh, boy adventurers doing therapy <laughs> uh, here, um, which, are, which I really love. Um, you know, Johnny started using using voodoo dust early because his dad's uh, lab was a pharmacological candy store. <laughs> uh, Rusty had to wear shorts till college. Uh, Lance explains why him and his brother's guns are on, prints are on the gun. <laughs> he forgot a whole you know? lifetime of detective work and touched the murder yeah. weapon. <laughs> and I went and grabbed it. Because <laughs> yeah. we were shocked, you see. Yeah. Uh, Roboy, whenever he sees a giant robot, he gets so mad. Sometimes he wants to burn the whole world. <laughs> And Wonder Boy cannot get an erection uh, without a time bomb taped to his chest, strapped in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> you have um, to wonder how you find that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I uh, love, I love Johnny's line. You, you just, suddenly you're snorting voodoo dust off the back of a monkey's paw, and you find out you're all out of wishes. You're all out of wishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so good. good. Uh, and then, like, what is probably my favorite exchange in the the episode? Uh, this thing with the puppet is so funny to me uh-huh. <laughs> like just you know uh like you know he's like what do you do he's like well i, I shoot him you have no gun you know mm-hmm. i run you know the time for running is over why don't you try talking to him <laughs> you know <laughs> just to, like and we were like this pose like he's gonna do a crane kick uh-huh yeah like he's like, right, the, uh, the talking's brought up you? yeah the, the, uh, god i love it so much yeah. just like we thought your skybird was landing on our burial ground and you were going to destroy us uh-huh. why well, I, I didn't know that yeah you know uh, I'm sorry about this. And then the sting at the end of this is so fucking good where he's just like, well, you never asked the puppet its name. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's your name? Chemical dependence. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to me. I love that very much. Yeah. And then the others are like, how is this relevant to us? Oh, just replace angry native with uh, whatever works for your genre's idiom. <laughs> yeah. But Pirates, also the, the chemical dependence little... thing plays really well to the room. Because uh-huh. everyone's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody kind of gets it. There's also the really great, like, okay, Johnny, you can stop hugging the native now. And everybody <laughs> laughing. Like, it's very funny. Like, it's very cute. Yeah. Uh, the scene uh rusty comes up and says hey can you whisper the name of the puppet to me <laughs> he doesn't want to admit it yeah uh, the therapist gets a charlie horse and then starts convulsing rusty doesn't get it at first but it turns out he uh he dies there and rusty says what happened i kill premature ejaculation <laughs> which is going to be his angry native right <laughs> oh gosh i'm Go just ahead. i don't think that's a correct self-assessment on rusty no he, he has no there's like uh, so many other things that are higher than that <laughs> he, he's got a lot of problems with his ding dong he does because he, he he was in dr quim he was trying to figure out something for imp, in, uh, impotence mm-hmm. as well so it's like he can get it up and then once he does it's all it's all over well he found you the know? cure he just never figured out how to bottle that ass that ass yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't figure out how to bottle that ass <laughs> there might have been a deleted scene where he's bottling ass after ass <laughs> on an assembly line grim <laughs> <laughs> um roboy touches the the therapist's penis like saying, why won't he reboot? Because mm-hmm. uh, his dick is a little reboot button. Which, mm-hmm. There's no reason for that. It just makes me laugh, though. Yeah. Well, like, there, there is an analog to this, which I doubt either of you are familiar with, and probably not, uh, you know, Jackson Public or Doc. But um, there's this anime series called Chobbits. It's a romance okay. about a boy and a robot. And the this robot girl has a reset switch on her vagina. Okay. So if they ever have sex, he would literally fuck her brains out. 
I'm I'm nodding silently. Yeah, yes, yeah. but that is a something that is like it made me think of that. Okay, because they're both crotch reset buttons. That's bizarre. That 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 is that is, that is, that a, is a, a, a strange decision for them to make in that uh in the in that cartoon. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Huh. Um, anyway. I read a long article in the Comics <laughs> Journal about it. Hmm, that's wild. Explain why it was more infantile than Love Hina. Like, if you have to read one, it's like, what? Well, apparently, one, that one's better for you. <laughs> the the uh, it it, do, it does seem like it it's a it pretty infantile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vagina button. Yeah, but this well, is gotta uh, be some kind of weird psychosexual stuff wrapped up with the G spot. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I I don't know. It's kind of a button. Yeah. Um. Don't know. The uh the lump in his pants, uh Wonder Boy is like, Well, you've we've certainly rebooted booted something. He's got rigor mortis, thinking he has a big erection. And as opposed to twenty you know, twenty one, who's like, This is this is foul guys. He's like, Everyone check it out. Yep. <laughs> it's so weird. Like everybody gather around. Uh it turns out it is a snake instead of an erection. Yes. Uh Johnny uh chimes in saying, Oh, that is the uh it's the Vietnamese two step vi- uh viper. Uh, you know, poison, poison so deadly that you only make it two steps. Uh, uh, an actual urban legend that went around uh, during the, uh, the Vietnam War about a, an mm-hmm. actual snake uh, that happened here. But uh, but the Hale brothers say, oh, that's, you know, that's an urban legend. Lance even like looks it up on his Blackberry. Uh, and Rusty calls one of them Encyclopedia Brown Noser, which is very good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Lance is impossibly fast with that uh, Googling. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Googled it. Got some time for everything. Blackberry. <laughs> um, the uh, Wonder Boy, you know, thinks he's going to have snake repellent. He doesn't have it in his belt. The snake is heading towards Rusty, who had smelled the coffee before. He, he, there was some kind of scent he didn't identify, and he realized it was actually snake pheromones, which he throws on to uh, Wonder Boy, <laughs> who just goes, why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and Ray, R- R- Boy wakes up and was the one with superpowers, yeah. fries the snake. Yeah. With his uh, with it with his uh, laser eyes, yeah. Um, and uh, Dale says like, "Hey Johnny, uh, go check out the doctor's files because he's over by a shelf." Uh, Johnny was there already, uh, going for prescription pads because of course he would. Uh, but mm-hmm. Dale figures, hey, you know, he doesn't just treat heroes; he treats uh, treat, uh, he doesn't just treat protagonists; he treats antagonists. I need to use the preferred nomenclature. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's possible that one of the antagonist clients uh, off him. So we need to see who else he treated so we can use, use it as a list of suspects. And this is the, the this, this is Dale backsliding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to, to be a, uh, a boy adventure. And it's kind of inspiring. I love how they undercut this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, you never hired me this. Let's come on, let's do some boy adventuring. Yeah. And then later when they're like, Oh, you went to, you drove all the way out here to be an old man because of a matchbook. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, Real good. Uh, Hatred ran into the bathroom uh, when he freaked out about all the young boys, tries to give himself an injection, but the vial is empty uh, and cannot, you know, can't search his pockets. A real cute touch. He has a shrinky dink. Mm-hmm. In his, in his Dean got him. <laughs> he, Very cute. He was making him with Dean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also here, there's a, there's a dad holding a boy over a urinal who's urinating while he holds the boy up. Mm-hmm. Is that a thing? No, they have, got, they've got the short, the short urinals. Yeah, and just a stall. Yeah, you know, I I was just I've never been like lifted off my feet while urinating. It seems like it'd be real disorienting. I've seen it in other things, huh? Okay, yeah, don't think I've ever seen a kid actually getting that done. Yeah, that doesn't match anything in my experience. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he he comes out and there's a little kid who's cosplaying. Yeah, you know, with with toilet stuff, shirtless toilet paper wrapped around him as the elf prince. Mm-hmm. And uh, hatred. This uh, this root. This is the final straw for hatred. Yeah, I love how hatred hisses at the boy. Is <laughs> and backs away. <laughs> Locks himself in the stall for everybody's uh, everybody's benefit. Uh, back mm-hmm. in the a plot, the matchstick leads them to uh, to Night Nails. You know the seedy place where that therapist, you know, probably would never go. Uh, I love the gossip as they're rolling up because, of course, what else would they would these people talk about? But people they know, right? Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. oh, and John's like oh, everybody thought Velma. You know, everybody thought that about Velma, but you know, I got a pack of herpes that proves otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, a pack, a pack. Um, they Which, go in. They see a. a 
Go ahead. It's just surprising that there's like there's Scooby Doo in their universe because there's also the Groovy Gang. <laughs> well, there, there's Race Bannon as well as uh, Johnny Johnny uh, Quest. And yeah, but Action it goes Johnny. deeper. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's there's yeah. a couple weird weird doubles in that, like as they're trying to figure out what they can actually do. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they recognize a guy in the the bar uh, from the Doctor's Files, uh, the scuba guy who we've seen a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Johnny recognizes him because he uh, dresses like Doctor. Or he's one of uh, Doctor Z's old henchmen. Mm-hmm. Um, a biker walks up who looks like one of the the Take on Me uh, <laughs> video <laughs> bikers and menaces Johnny. And here's that great little bit of ad lib. Yeah. Uh, here. <laughs> The, do- yeah. the doctor's got a, or the, the the biker's got a sore on his lip, and Johnny's like, yeah, "It looks like you got a little herpy on your lip there. You've been kissing your mm-hmm. wife's ass after I put herpy in there. <laughs> put herpy in there. <laughs> it's such a passive way <laughs> to explain what you did. Also, singular herpy. <laughs> yeah, it's like putting something on a shelf. <laughs> it's uh, uh, they get into a fight and they do a Batman 1960s Batman show uh parody <laughs> where they uh they they have the the call outs yeah. you know whatever you call them you know mm-hmm. kit, sound groin. effects the, yeah the yeah. illustrated sound effects the stings yeah, yeah. uh but yeah. you know they're the some of them are pathetic like uh rusty goes and crawls under a table and says cower uh <laughs> wonder boy jumps that, that was one of the hail brothers oh yeah, yeah that yeah. was uh that was yeah. the, the non-action hail yeah coward because rusty had to be jetpack kicked oh that's true Roboy yeah. holds him up and he uh <laughs> He does yeah. a kick. Uh, but uh, Wonder Boy jumps off of a table and it's just torn meniscus because he's wearing a, <laughs> he's wearing a neoprene knee, knee brace as part of his character. Very good. <laughs> no. uh, the boys get out of the movie. They're like, uh, you know, where's where's hatred? Oh, wait, he left me a message. Um, and he, he talks about his backsliding, you know. Um, he doesn't have any more beds at the compound. OSI isn't answering their phone. Um, he tried to call princess tiny feet, tiny feet, but accidentally called them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they don't know what to do. They need a ride. And I love this little bit where they're like, Hey, can we get a ride to 21 and 21? Just tell me you didn't leave before the credits. <laughs> like 21's enthusiasm for dork media is so good. Yeah. I would love to live in a town with 21 just so we could watch MCU movies together. Oh yeah. yeah. And like, just absolutely lose our minds. Mm-hmm. Like it, up every movie experience yeah if you like Absolutely. to be 21 <laughs> now um i didn't see the lord of the rings movie did they have after credit sequences no 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 i think this is just referencing the the at the, the time Marvel new thing, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, credits. yeah the, the first like oh stick around for the credits thing that wasn't like outtakes in a comedy that i could think of was like stay around at the end of the the spider-man the first spider-man movie there's a there's a nice surprise and just like halfway through they just start playing the old spider-man uh, uh cartoon set uh a theme song yeah 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 and eventually they got more plot important and then oh, they course. got way less plot important yeah because they couldn't have them all be <laughs> plot important so uh, um it's also a little uh cheeky reference to this show right like the show puts a little post credit stinger yes yeah. at the end of every episode oh yeah yeah you know you can see that. so well, I think um, someone made have written that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, so the the boy adventurers take the X one down to Johnny or Doctor Z's house. Uh, Johnny says, "You know, there's a, a a bad lead." He apologizes about Rusty's balls, which got kicked. And uh, I love Spirit is up and roving, but Opportunity hasn't come back online yet. <laughs> like that's the exact opposite of like in. Tim Robinson, when he says somebody did a total paint job in a bathroom and it makes no literal sense, but you know exactly what it means. Uh-huh. The idea of one of my balls not being up online yet. Uh, uh, it's very evocative. I have no idea what that means though. <laughs> like, oh, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll retract, uh, and, uh, during trauma. Yeah. There, there, yeah. there's, there, there's, there, there, there's yeah, a, there's a ligament that pulls in. Yeah. I, I've never had my balls retract into me. Yeah. Consider really? yourself lucky. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Are you guys being serious? Like you guys get hit in the balls and your balls go up into your body? I oh, mean, it hasn't happened like it, that often. Yeah, no. But like once but it, is enough. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. Uh-huh. Yeah. I no. had a friend whose ball didn't drop until he was like much older. <laughs> did you did you hear it happen? It was like a big timpani hit. <laughs> and, there, and there's another guy who had that happen and everybody in high school called him Uno. <laughs> but like <laughs> yeah no it's just yeah. a it's just a temporary thing there's like a it's a it's a trauma response there's just a ligament wow, that'll pull it up yeah 
Huh? I, I spent a lot of time making fun of balls, but maybe they are pretty cool. That's pretty I smart. Mean, I mean, uh, so here, here, here's, here's the thing. You only need that. Like that's a kludge, right? Like it's a bad solution for a problem that wouldn't exist if they were better designed. That's true. Yeah. It's a patch. <laughs> I, I can't believe they buffed balls. <laughs> I'm telling you, dicks need a nerf in this patriarchy. Cole, I'm, I'm confused. Are you questioning God and his infinite wisdom who designed everything perfectly? Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, the idea that they have to be slightly cooler is yeah. I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got two things between my legs that disprove the infallibility of our God. <laughs> yeah. Just a, a silly little ugly sack. You know, just a wrinkly little nightmare. <sighs> God, I hate ball sacks. Maybe that's the problem. If it was just perfectly smooth, maybe I'd be into it. <laughs> you know? Like a balloon, like a water balloon. Yeah. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. like a picky eater is a texture issue. Yeah, well, it's totally you know, a texture there, issue. There are podcast sponsors who have things that can help you with that. <laughs> Thinking about that for a second. Chewing yeah. on that. Chewing on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I when we complained about this one episode, uh our non binary and trans friends in the Slack were all like, You guys can get rid of your balls. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not like you guys have to have them to do a surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I was like seriously considering it for a minute. <laughs> like, huh. Hmm. What life be like with just <laughs> There Just would be penis. there would be other effects that would that uh, that, that I don't true. know that I would uh, necessarily be signed on for for that yeah well even with my like you know fallow. oh yeah no just a, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a parody it's a, it's a, just a parody yeah. you got there now that you've yeah. uh, gotten the snip but yeah my noodles but <laughs> they do uh, they do other things that is your point is well taken yes yeah yeah yep anyway. Um, <laughs> but spirit and opportunity, a very good metaphor for that. Johnny knocks on Dr. Z's door and says, trick or treat old man, you know, kind of doing like a fun little, uh, fun, fun little one liner there. Uh, but Dr. Z believes them and gets a tray of hard candies. <laughs> I, I, it's so sweet. Yep. Oh, I did not know it was the 31st already. <laughs> uh, it's very, very sweet. Yeah. Um, and then he, he recognizes him, you know, Johnny Z press him for information. He recognizes that he's there and he's like, you know, I would never do this. You know, what is it this time? Johnny coming to shake me down and steal old man's medication again. <laughs> like he's like, no, you killed, you know, you killed our therapist. And, you know, Dr. Z would never do that. There'd be a scorpion with no less than six ninjas that would pop out of its cavity. Mm-hmm. You know, very yeah. good. I wouldn't use a civilian proxy, you know, to attack with a made up snake. You know, yeah. good point. <laughs> uh mrs z calls down and says are you know are your guests hungry and they all kind of nod <laughs> uh especially wonder boy uh giving us our, our like delightful anti-climax to that plot yep uh, so but before we get uh more hatred we do yeah uh you know so uh hatred's of the compound he's locked himself in the panic room he's drunk um and just like you know, the boys are outside like saying hatred you you need your medicine uh, he says, no, you guys need to clear the way so I can get to the X one, uh, because I need to, and this is, this is just from the show. I need to go to Thailand to buy a beautiful Brown little lady boy <laughs> to keep in my room for when the urges crop up, which is, yeah. which is just a, just a setup for Dean to say in his Dean voice, uh, no <laughs> beautiful boy girls. Aren't the answer the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have a little brother sister? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you can't do that. Yeah, I can. Gary Glitter told me where to get one. Yeah. Uh, isn't it uh, pretty? I mean, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but in Europe, uh, they disowned Gary Glitter when he turned out he was a, a pedophile. In the United States, we still play his music at like every basketball game for some reason. I, I like, haven't been to a basketball game after he got canceled. I, I haven't either, but I've seen him on TV and I talked to uh, my friend who plays drums who goes to all mm-hmm. the basketball games. Oh. And it's like, yeah, they still play rock and roll part too. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. The like, it, it is a it is a banger, but like, Jesus Christ, you know, <laughs> guy's no good. Yeah, no, I remember like just just kind of, get kind of limp outrage at that scene in Joker where he's dancing around to the the, the mm-hmm. rock and roll part two. But that was that was about yeah. it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's strange. Yeah. yeah, that's how you get Jokers. Yeah, <laughs> um, they say like, what did you used to do before the medicine? And he said, Princess Tiny Feet. Uh, so this gives them an idea. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Princess Tiny Feet was his cure uh, before. Uh, back over at Dr. Z's, Wonder Boy is wolfing down thirds uh, the food. Mm-hmm. Lance insults him for it. Um, and Dr. Z is like, hey, did you guys really, did you just come here to beat up an old man because he found a matchbook where you shouldn't have found it? Like, yeah. 
you know, like fly across the country. You yeah. Know? You know, and Dale's like, uh, no, I had to do something. There was a mystery, right? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Z responds like there's always a mystery. Mm-hmm. It never ends. Not until you decide enough is enough. Like, I wish I had settled down sooner. You know, if we had me and Mrs. Z could have had kids, you know, believe it or not, she's older than me, mm-hmm. even though her, her mountains are voluminous. Her valley is barren. You know, <laughs> uh, and you know, she says, oh, I thought we couldn't have kids cause I was your beard. She's a little done, reference yeah, to Dr. sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a great little bit here where, uh, action Johnny's like, can you believe it? That like, I'm actually older than rusty. He looks like you'd be my dad. <laughs> like you have more chemical preservatives in you than a Twinkie. Yeah. Uh, and and tell me that's not a weave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His hair does change a lot. Yeah. Uh, here. Um, but just that I love, this is very sweet. Like, I wish I just stopped, like got out of the game sooner and just enjoyed the good life. Yeah. You know, and like Dr. Z living his best life down here, like with his wife is so sweet. Mm hmm. I love, like, I love these characters being domestic. My favorite thing, last episode we talked about, we introduced Red Mantle and Dragoon. And uh, my favorite episode with them is during the one where everyone does their last arch and mm-hmm. they put off opening, opening the envelopes so they can watch Downton Abbey. <laughs> and it's just so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like very, like, tender hearted. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's, a, you know, they talk about this in the art book, but like, even his wife, you know, she got out of the game too. Like, she used to be mm-hmm. like his, uh, his, like, sidekick or henchman. She was like a dragon lady. Uh, that they, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, kind of imply by our design. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I like all of these people deciding, no, the life is not for me. And then that immediately going against the rusty, just ignoring that and going against it because he does not want to associate with these losers. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he does like, he does have a kind of a point, like this whole thing, mm. you know, where he's like, I didn't try to kill my father. Like I have a family, Yeah, you know, these are all loners, but I'm like not with my kids and my bodyguard and, you know, I have people who care about me. Like yeah, he's not as that much is. better than them. No, he, he's not. No, <laughs> just, like Doc is an ego first yeah. character. Yeah, and you like, know, he's like, I have a business, but it's like, no, you <laughs> don't have a business. <laughs> it's just like his his takeaway is, I don't need therapy. Look at what I have. These people, you know, these these freaks have nothing. And it's like, no, yeah. <laughs> please, for the love of God. Well, that that is clearly wrong. Yes. If you, but if you take it from the perspective of the show, mm-hmm. right? Like, the the this the show does not have a very enlightened attitude about therapy, mm. uh, as evidenced by all the therapy jokes in it. Yeah. Like the idea that he, I th- I, I buy it. I buy yeah. that the doc has a little bit more going on for him. Yeah. Like he's got kids. He's got a family. You know, he's settled down. All he wants to do is have like a, this domestic life. Like he do, he is trying to do what Doctor Z does. He just costumed idiots keep showing up at his door. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You know, I don't yeah, know. but then like he makes walking eyes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And he's trying he's to. He's taking not mil- military it. contracts and taking his kids around on. You know, he's doing the same stuff to his kids. Yeah. Well, but for adventure reasons, for money reasons, not yeah. for like just love of the game. Yeah. Like I think that the the part that is the parallel is wanting to get out of the game. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I could see that. Um, yeah, it's it's a gradient. He's he's it's not open and shut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just like he like he's it, it, it's one of those things where he's got all of the like parts of the argument right, but his conclusion is wrong. <laughs> just like yeah. yes, all of this is true, but I should but I, so I'm going to quit therapy. No, you should quit therapy, but spend more time with your family. <laughs> like commit commit to this, commit to the commit to the domestic life. Yeah. Uh, also in this moment, Roboy asks if Doctor Z wants to adopt him. <laughs> Very sweet. <laughs> It's like, oh, you want kids? Would you like a robot or robot boy? <laughs> Can I suggest me? <laughs> um, you know, Rusty's like, I had to get back to my own business. You know, he's left his kids again. Yeah. Uh, back at the the compound, uh, Dean brings a disguised tank as Princess Tiny Feet to the panic room, which lures uh, Hatred out, who then gets darted yeah. uh, by all the henchmen that they had borrowed. Again, I love it when the boys and the henchmen team up. Mm-hmm. I hate killing you, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, 21 uh, had a grudge against uh, against hatred, right? Because they always square off against each other. So there you go. I so owed him one. And they're just going to mm-hmm. keep him tranquilized until the OSI calls back. You know, so he's not going to yeah. be freaking out. Just, uh, just, just, just take a nap, man. Sleep it off. Sleep it off. Good advice. Uh, and then a post credits where they reveal who did it. 21 and 24, like hanging out. He's talking to the skull as he does about the movie and the monarch walks in and they just have like a friend chat. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's like, Oh, you know, I liked it better than the first one, but not quite as good as the second one. Oh, that's what they were saying. on ain't it cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, very snapshot. Yeah. And, and also, know, and the also the, the, them relating as just, as just dudes, as just, as just mm-hmm. people, as opposed to the like hierarchy that they have, you know, 
Um, and then Monarch asks, like, oh, did you take care of that thing? You know, 21 was the one you planted the snake uh, on the Monarch's order so that he could get rid of Rusty's excuse. You know, not going to kill Rusty, but he can't go to therapy if there's no therapist. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Which is really weird because, like, oh, then fire up the weapons for tomorrow. And it's like, he was going to be free tomorrow anyway. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just, uh, I I thought that too, but then I was like, oh, they originally didn't know who was going to have do it. Yeah. This is, he's future proofing, Uh, (laughs) you know, is the only, uh, only only thing i can think of is like he'll never have this excuse again yeah but it's like the next episode directly follows the arch yep if i recall no yeah the next episode is a a orpheus episode my my favorite episode of the season um yeah uh any any final thoughts folks um therapy might be right for you (laughs) <laughs> consider it for me Don't just write that off oh for, just for for people i i, I yeah yeah for people okay. yeah yeah i think you're just talking listener to me you listening to this yeah yeah, yeah. Everybody for should help. yeah. <laughs> no uh like if you if you think that it's gonna be hard uh the, the your community probably has a counseling center uh that you can talk to that has uh negotiable rates especially for cash depending on ability mm-hmm. to pay and uh you don't have to go like every week you know it can be uh yeah. it can be uh, however much you can it is very helpful and there and, is no stigma attached to it i go yeah and it, it can it can go on for as long as you want to it's not like you're signing yourself up for a lifetime of it mm-hmm. which was my initial anxiety like oh i don't want to do this every every week for the rest of my life yeah not the case i go on and off mm-hmm. uh the other thing about it is like maybe you'll get a bad fit you know mm-hmm. uh but you're not trapped they're professionals like if you have somebody and you don't like how they work, you should communicate that to them mm-hmm. because they're trained in different styles and they might take a different approach. And if it's, if you're simply incompatible, that's also okay. And you can find another one yeah. and agencies and insurance companies and such that deal with that are used to that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, they understand that not everybody's a great fit. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard to write off the entire uh, experience just because if you get a bad, yeah. a bad individual, it's a, uh, it's hard to take that first step, but I've never regretted uh, uh, seeking out help. Because it's it's hard, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely do it. And they this don't get killed by snakes that often. Yeah, I mean, it's no, no. I've only had it happen like twice. Yeah, that, and that's what I mean. When I said bad fit. It was code for snakes. <laughs> so I just uh, I was I figured you guys would all read between the lines. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so this episode brought to you by therapy. Also, uh, Nick, can you tell everybody again where they can find your work? I make the comic Latchkey Kingdom. It's at latchkeykingdom.com. And it is about child adventurers, not necessarily boy adventurers. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they get up in all sorts of mischief. It's also a fantasy comic. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Been going for a long time. Uh, lots of different arcs. Yeah. Uh, uh, in yep. that. Yeah. yeah, long running. So you can. Where's a good place to start if somebody wants to uh, to start the comic? Oh, but I'm not ready for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, let I'm me just list. flip up the archive here. Um, hmm, I'd, I'd say go chapter 13, Firecracker Fishing. It's not really a story connected to anything. It's just about a uh, a fishing trip, actually. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, give you give you a sense of the characters and the tone. Yeah, and mm-hmm. such. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. recommended. Beautiful art style. Very charming. Uh, mm-hmm. If you like us, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash TV, get mm-hmm. early episodes and bonus shows and stuff. You can also leave ratings or reviews on Apple podcast or podcast addict. Yeah. You can tell your friends, uh, if you've got people who are trying to get into venture brothers to say, Hey, here's a companion. If you like podcasts as well, uh, and you can come back next week where we're going to be talking about the better man. Um, but most mm-hmm. of all, until next time, go, go team, team venture. venture.